Hi everyone, this is Ranjit, back with another video. It's been a longer than usual gap since my last video, and that is because I migrated to Linux. I'm not using Windows anymore. Obviously, that means I cannot continue making videos like I did. I can't use Visual Studio, I can't use Rhino. So things needed to change, and that is what I have been working on during this gap. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what is new about the code base and how I plan to continue making videos on algorithms in the future on Linux. So let's run the build script and build the code to get an overview of how everything is organized. Obviously, I kept all the C++ code, but I've removed all traces of Windows specific stuff. I also removed all the .NET code. I removed everything related to Rhino from the code base. And obviously, since I'm not using Visual Studio, I'm now using CMake to build the C++ code. You can see that there's a binary called galcore that got built. This is where all the core geometry algorithms sit. And most of the future videos will likely be focused on this part of the code base. I also added a lot of new code during this gap and galfunk is part of that new code. This is basically my bare bones grasshopper replacement. All the things that I was using grasshopper for in my past videos to test my algorithms, I will now be doing that on Linux using galfunk. Obviously it's nowhere near as fancy as Grasshopper, but it, it does what I need it to do. Galview is also part of that new code that I added. And I will be using this in my future videos instead of Rhino for visualizing the results of the algorithms. I mean, I never used any of the actual modeling features of Rhino in my videos. So this is just a viewer. PyGalfunk is a Python wrapper on Galfunk. I will talk more about that later. My last video was about clipping a mesh with a plane. If you haven't seen that, you can go check that out. There should be a link in the top right and also in the description. So in that video, I created a simple grasshopper definition that ran my code and showed me the results in the Rhino viewer. That's basically a demo for the algorithm. So I'm going to quickly show you what such a demo would look like in this new environment on Linux using the new tools. I am going to start by creating an empty Python script, then import a couple of libraries with convenient aliases. So PyGalfunk has all the core geometry stuff and PyGalView has stuff related to the viewer and interactive UI. First, let's set up the mesh that we're going to clip with a plane. I'm going to use the functions that pygalfunk provides and convert the relative path of the obj file into the absolute path. You might be wondering why I have these commas on the left hand side. That is because all functions in pygalfunk return tuples of various lengths. These two functions happen to return a tuple of length one and the comma just means that I'm unpacking the tuple's first element directly into the variable. I'm going to use some more functions from the pygalfunk module to import the mesh and scale it up by 10 times. Since I don't plan to change the scaling factor later, I will just hard code the scaling factor using the number f32 function. Now we have to create the plane and unlike the scaling factor, I don't want to hard code the origin and the normal of the plane. I want to be able to change these later interactively and see the results you know, see how the results change. So I will use sliders. I'll create a list of three sliders for the coordinates of the origin of the plane. And since this is Python, I can do this very conveniently using Python syntax. Then I'll create another list of three sliders for the coordinates of the plane's normal. I'm going to quickly create the point and the normal using the sliders as the coordinates and then I will use those to create the plane. Then I'll use the clip mesh function in pygalfunk to clip the mesh with the plane. All that is left to do now is to declare what data we want to output from this demo. I'm going to do this using the functions in the pygalview module. In addition to outputting the clipped mesh itself, I am going to also calculate the area of that mesh and the centroid of that mesh and output them as well. If the output is geometry, I'll use the show function to send that geometry to the viewer. If 
the output is like numbers or text, I'll use the print function to see it as text. Okay, so that is all the Python code we need. Now let's run this demo by running the gal view application that we built earlier and giving it the path to our Python demo file as the argument. So I immediately got an error there and that's just telling me that I'm using, I'm passing around the tuple instead of unpacking the tuple's members. So I'll just quickly jump into the script and make a small correction and let's run that again. So that opens up this viewer which has some floating panels. If you look inside the panel titled inputs, you'll find all the sliders that we created in our demo. So that's six sliders with the names that we gave them. You can obviously interact with those sliders and change the values and immediately you can see that the geometry is changing in the viewer. So everything we passed to the show function of the PyGal view module gets shown in the viewer, obviously. In this case, it's the plane which shows up as a red translucent surface and the clipped bunny mesh behind it. And if you look at the outputs panel, it's showing all of our output data. So every geometry output has a checkbox next to it, so we can use that checkbox to toggle its visibility. And all the data that we printed shows up as text. In this case, it's the area of the clipped mesh and its centroid and it's updated in real time as we interact with the sliders. Now, let's say I want this demo to be more flexible. I want to run this on different meshes and I want to be able to change the scale of the mesh at runtime. I can go ahead and create another slider for the scaling factor instead of hard coding it. I can also create a text field where I can input the relative path of the OBJ file instead of hard coding it as a string in my Python script. Let's run this demo again and now we see two new inputs. For the relative path input, I will type the relative path of the obj file. And we are looking at the same thing that we were looking at before. But now I can change the scale of this bunny with this slider. I can also load a different obj file. So this is a slightly larger, higher triangle count version of the bunny. You know, it has more detail. So yeah, you can see the demo still works as expected. The last thing I want to show you is running headless scripts. Let's write an example script. Let's start out with some boilerplate code that loads the necessary modules and then load the bunny mesh like we did before and compute its area and volume. Let's then retrieve the values and print them to the screen like you would anything else in Python. Okay, so we're done with the script and now we're going to run it like we would any other Python file from the command line and it prints the volume and the area of the mesh. So I hope that gives you an idea of the tools I will be using in all my future videos. And of course, everything is very bare bones and I will continue adding features to these tools on an as needed basis, you know, as I'm making videos. I already started working on the next video, which should be coming out soon. See you in the next one.